Okay, commissioners, we're coming back together here. We're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order at 5 o'clock. Welcome to the Citizens Advisory Council meeting. Can we get a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Bruni. Oh, here. Oh, sorry. sorry. Commissioner Bruni. Here. Commissioner Moody. Here. Commissioner Savala. Here. Vice Chair Burke. Here. And Chair O'Claire. Present. Thank you. We're now entering the public comment section of today's meeting. We'll now hear public comments regarding items on the agenda. Comments are limited to three minutes. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any public comment on this agenda? We don't have public comments for this portion. Okay, thank you. We're now going to move to the consent calendar. The consent calendar contains items that will be considered altogether. May I entertain a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar? Move to approve. Second. Okay, moved by Jane. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you. We're now going to move to the business items. Item two. The annual Wainimi Hero Award. Will staff please present the report? Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners, members of the public. Um, the uh, first item, first action item for your consideration is a uh, review and discussion of the Wainimi Hero Award. Um, as you may recall, the Wainimi Hero Award was established uh, as an annual acknowledgement of individuals or groups that make an extraordinary contribution to the Port Wainimi community. The process for the award is included in the Heroes History and Heritage Policy and begins with the city's call for nominations. This year that began in early April um, and consisted of multiple postings on our social media accounts. A total of six nominations were received uh, for different individuals. There were some uh, repeated nominations for the same individual. Nominations are summarized in the staff report and they're also included as attachments to the report itself. Uh, pursuant to the policy, uh, the process includes uh, this body reviewing uh, and making a recommendation to the City Council uh, to recognize and award an individual or individuals as the 2024 Wainimi Hero. So does the Commission have any questions for staff at this time? Only questions? Um, on the staff report will be taken and our conversation um, will occur after that. Any questions for staff clarifying this item? Uh, just this item, the Heroes uh, Annual Wainimi Hero Award, the report that was just provided. Lack of information that Mr. Savala, can yes. you pull one of the microphones? Sorry. There you go. And then, thank you. That's, Commissioner. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> since I'm not familiar with this stuff, a few things concern me. And one was the, the application process. It doesn't, um, I'm assuming this document that's in here is what is reviewed by this, the staff. And one question I have based on some of my experience is uh, when they do they do background checks on any of these people uh, there's not a full background check but there is a quick social media search that is done to ensure that uh, none of the individuals have anything that would preclude us from honoring uh, them I mean do they do a criminal background check we do not conduct a criminal background check in this process okay, no. so that's not an issue we do not conduct a criminal background okay. check in this All process right. Commissioner, did you have other uh, qu questions? Uh, we can also we're, we're going to have an opportunity to ask additional questions too okay, once we have no, public I'm comment. Good. I'm good. Okay, um, we're now going to receive public comment on this item. Are there any public comments on this item? No public comments. Okay, so the recommendation is for, for this committee to review nominations for the annual Wainimi Hero Award and provide a recommendation to the City Council for approval. We're now going to enter into discussion on this item, commissioners. Um, first, let's. See if there's any general questions about the process, um, and then we'll go down to have a nomination and a second on an individual. On an individual, any initial questions about the process? Oh, 
provide everybody just a quick moment to glance through your application, excuse me, your agenda, and glance through that. So let's give that uh, about a minute or so, and then we'll come back together. So a point of clarification that I asked a little bit earlier, so just so that we have it for the record, um, was is this HERO award limited to one nominee? And my understanding is no, is that correct? Yeah, there's nothing that would preclude awarding um, the 2024 Wanima HERO to more than one individual or group. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's a good question, thank you. I'll just give everybody just one more moment there to glance through the nominations. Um, Mr. Oakley? Yes. Um, we have a resident who just submitted a public comment and was wondering if you're willing to open it back up. Absolutely. So colleagues, we're going to go ahead um, and move, return to the public comments on this item. So uh, we'll have an opportunity to again review these uh, applications and discuss, but first let's go ahead and give that resident or that individual an opportunity to discuss. Thank uh, you. Council member, please go ahead. Thank you. I'm here as a resident tonight, a resident only, and I just wanted to um, <clears throat> share with you my experiences with both the individuals who have been nominated for this award. And if I were to have to choose between these two individuals, I would have a very hard time. I think both of them, um, I think they deserve to be honored equally, and let me tell you why. George, on the one hand, is, there's three people? Oh, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I, I only focused on the two that I'm yeah, most familiar with, uh, George and Kevin Brandon. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. And, I'd, um, you know, George at the Ocean View Pavilion, um, out of his own pocket, has provided a venue, and he calls it the Senior Savvy, Savvy Senior Event, and he does it out of his own pocket. He spends a lot of money just to bring seniors together, and... Um, on the other end of the spectrum, you have Kevin Brannon, who's out there spending time with families and youth and bringing them together. And one day they will be a senior like myself <laughs> in the city of Port Wainimi. And I think those two individuals, they're both friends of mine, and there's no way I could pick one over the other. But I do believe both of them, their actions together are servicing um, the most important sides of our community, the youth and our senior citizens. So um, it, hopefully that helps you make a decision. I don't know if it does. Thank you. Thank you for providing that public comment. We're now going to go ahead and close public comment and return to the commissioners for discussion. Commissioners, have you had enough time to review the applications? Or would anybody like additional time to review them? Good. OK, so at this time, I will entertain a motion to uh, nominate one or more individuals for the Wainimi Hero Award. If there is a second, then we'll go ahead and enter into discussion on that item, or those individuals, rather. Yes, go ahead. I would like to nominate Kevin Brannon and George. Okay, is there a second? A second on that nomination? Those nominations together? I'll second that. Okay. It was moved and seconded. Commissioners, what discussion do we have on this item? Excuse me, on these nominations. A joint nomination of the individual nominated Kevin uh, Brannon and George Mug. Mug how, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, together. What discussion do we have? I agree with Councilman Gama that both of these gentlemen deserve to be heroes mm -hmm. for the work they do in our community. As he said, George works with the seniors, Kevin works with the youth, and I think they both deserve this. 
Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Any other Commissioner comments? Commissioner Moody? Any other Commissioner comments? I agree with Becky. I think that there's a, there's a, there's a lot of good that's done by both individuals, um, and it does t target two different um, citizens groups, the youth and the um, seniors, which I guess some of us are part of. <laughs> <laughs> but <coughs> anyway, it's very nice that we have these types of community efforts, and, and, and uh, so I think it, they're well-deserved uh, to get these awards. Okay, thank you for that. Any other commissioners wish to speak on this item? Okay, it was moved and seconded. Is there a roll call, please? Oh, actually, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I should probably should give my own comments. I just want to uh, thank you uh, to those who've submitted nominations. This is a really important process. I want to thank the staff, of course, for promoting the submission opportunities. Uh, that's something that each year the city looks for different ways to promote the opportunities to submit names for this award, and I, I'm pleased to see that we had um, the number of applicants that we've received, nominations rather, and uh, I'm comfortable moving forward with a dual nomination. Um, both are very special people, and I, uh, I thank those who thought of them and nominated them and, of course, them for their work. So with that, uh, we can go to a roll call. Sure. Commissioner Bernie? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Savala? Yes. Vice Chair Burke? Yes. And Chair O'Claire? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. We're now going to move to item three. This is the Community Benefit Fund College Scholarship Program. Will staff please present the report? Thank you. Sure. Um, so uh, item number three, as Chair said, is the uh, Community Benefit Fund Scholarship Program. The 2023-24 um, uh, Community Benefit Fund allocations included $10,000 uh, for a college, college scholarship program. As part of the approval, $8,000 was to be set aside for eight $1,000 uh, scholarships, and $2,000 was to be used uh, for a ceremony to recognize uh, those that were awarded the scholarship. Uh, subsequent to that action, uh, eligibility criteria was established. Uh, that includes um, the requirement to be a Port Wayne resident, having a GPA of 3.0 or higher, um, ha being in the possession of an acceptance letter, from a college or a trade school uh, and completing uh, the application form along with uh, transcript and proof of residency. This year, a total of four applications were received. Staff members from the port and the city reviewed the applications and made recommendations to the city manager and the executive director of the port. Uh, in the end, three individuals were awarded the scholarships. The only individual that was, was not selected uh, was uh, not a Port Wainini resident was excluded on, on that grounds. Um, the recognition ceremony uh, is being planned, has not been finalized yet, uh, but is tentatively scheduled for uh, July 23rd over at the Channel Islands Maritime Museum. Um, the item is presented uh, both to provide an update uh, and to provide the CAC pursuant to its comments uh, at its last meeting, the opportunity to review the scholarship program um, and allow for discussion about the existing process uh, and um, consider and make any recommendations to the City Council if it feels uh, modification to the existing process is appropriate. That concludes the staff presentation. Thank you. What questions do we have of staff of this item? Again, uh, the Commission, if you have any questions for staff, only questions will be taken at this time. We'll have opportunities to deliberate and give feedback in just a moment. Um, are there any questions, initial questions? Now we'll move to public comment, and then we will return to this item. Okay, is there any public comments on this item? No public comments for this item. Okay, there's no public comments, so we're now going to go to commissioner um, feedback and the recommendations uh, which are here, which is to receive and file the information about the students who are awarded the scholarships and review the process to vet the applications, um, a as well as to consider whether to recommend that the city council approve changes to the existing process. So let's begin there. I'll give everybody just an opportunity to glance over this document and then we'll enter into the discussion. So let's give it about a minute to glance over the document and then we'll enter into a discussion about it.
Commissioners, are we still reviewing or do we want to enter into a discussion? Yeah, I got a question. Um, yes, go ahead. So I only saw one letter. Um, were there any other letters from any of the other applicants? There were. The one attachment that was provided was just a, a sample. Um, oh. The uh, nominations have been reviewed, uh, awards have been selected. So that was the receive and file part. And mm -hmm. then if the commission wishes to discuss the process and make a recommendation to change the process in the future, oh, okay. that is the potential actionable part. So the applicants have already been sele selected? For this year's uh, allocations, oh, okay. yes. Okay. All right. Thanks. Comments? First of all, thank you, staff, and, and for putting together some uh, scholarship criteria because there wasn't any to start mm -hmm. with. And I think it's a very good first start um, for us to, to, to go down this path. And I guess the big question is, is, is this going to be an ongoing uh, part of the community benefit fund? Um, and I guess that's to be determined, right? So I guess the question, I mean, I, I see the $1,000 is a nice gift. Um, maybe it pays for books, <laughs> you know, because with the cost of education is very expensive. And I think that just wonder if there is a more robust plan for the future. If we're, if we're going to go down the scholarship program type scenario, uh, do we want to focus on particular subject matters that, that we want to see our children focusing on? Or uh, mm -hmm. are there some some things like the environment or science or, or whatever it might be. There might be mm -hmm. some topics or maybe it's rotated with, with some different um, focus. But I think that it's a really good start and I think that um, I'm, I'm fine with going forward with it for this year. And I guess the big question is, is if the scholarship program is going to continue, maybe we can make, a make it a little more robust and make it more meaningful for the, for the, for the students and for, um, for the Community Benefit Fund as well, and for the city and the students. That's all. Thank you. I think uh, Commissioner uh, Assistant Chair Burke it may have answered her own question, but I just wanted to be clear for those for those listening. The, the question of whether or not the program will continue, uh, you're, you're, you stated it absolutely correctly. It is subject to the actions of the port and the city mm -hmm. in the future. There, there are funds remaining from the current allocation. Uh, so it is our plan to uh, continue to offer scholarships with at least the remaining funds and potentially mm -hmm. with additional funds if that's approved in the future uh, by the uh, Harbor District and the, and the City Council. Thank you. I, I just want to take the opportunity to thank the uh, Oxnard Harbor District as well as the city for doing this, right? This is kind of an innovative way of using these funds. I'm not, I don't believe the city has entered into this type of arrangement, at least in the the most recent years, and so um, I also want to thank the staff members. You know, a lot of these staff we don't have dedicated scholarship staff, right? Uh, this is an additional role that they they uh, played in reviewing these applications and pulling it off. And I'm I'm excited that we were able to assist the students that were assisted. I think this is a great opportunity for both the city and the port to continue to expand our partnerships with the local school districts. Uh, the sooner that we can. Should the com the uh, the joint city port commission decide that this money gets rolled over and will be used for scholarships next year, I think it would be uh, improve our response rates to be able to get that information out to the counselors earlier, right, at the high schools. Um, certainly, I didn't hear about this until many were already in the graduation season, right, and so I think that will improve the application rates. I also would encourage us to look at some of our community orgs, right, MECOP and others that we could sh make sure to really intentionally share these flyers to on behalf of the city. And then finally, another key community partner here, or two rather, would be really working as closely as we can with CSU Channel Islands uh, to the best we can, as well as the Oxnard uh, College Foundation on this item. Um, college, uh, current college students, I don't believe were eligible under the current criteria, but I think that's something that certainly could be exp expanded and would be great to additionally help current college students in our city, particularly given the possibility 
at least up until recent years uh, that I'm aware of, to partner with the Oxnard College Foundation, uh, who often provides matching funds and other, other type of arrangements. And if we were to go to them hypothetically and say, hey, we have $5,000 we're going to invest in our community, or $2,000 scholarships, or $1,000 scholarship, can the district, can the, excuse me, the Oxnard College Foundation provide matching funds? Uh, I've seen that arrangement be very fruitful. I'm involved in another organization where we've been doing this for, I think, probably 30 years with the College Foundation. Um, and so that's another way that we can invest in local students and actually see these dollars um, uh, uh, multiply in magnitude. So that would be my suggestion. The Oxnard College Foundation continue to work with CSUCI, uh, reaching the, the high school counselors earlier, and then also uh, community groups uh, like MECOP and others here locally uh, to reach more, more, just more applicants. And I do feel that we should expand this program to uh, the college students as well. Um, and we could possibly stick with the same, the same criteria. I will say uh, there was a question that I had that should this continue, I'll send to the team that developed the application. It had to do with, I think it was something like, how has, please explain a time where citizenship and action um, has been demonstrated or some kind of question like that. I just remember the word citizenship being used and I'm not sure if that's would be interpreted the same by everybody. So just being clear uh, in some of those terms, um, you know, how, how do we get the widest net of applicants? And uh, so that would be my feedback. Again, uh, community partners, that we can get additional feedback. I, I hope that we at least will be able to allocate the rollover funds from this year to next year. Uh, and should the commission choose, excuse me, the uh, Oxnard Harbor District in the city, uh, it would be a great program to continue. 10,000, while it doesn't seem like a lot in a huge budget, uh, does make a real impact in college students' lives, um, even the smallest scholarship. So that's my feedback. Any other commissioners have feedback? Yeah, I got a question on the the, pro the application process. Um, it says a college acceptance letter or proof of enrollment in a trade school must be provided to receive funds. And then on the application, it has uh, three, three possible choices. You know, I, I don't, I'm not clear on that. You know, because so. I, mean, I mean, I, I'm a high school teacher. You know, and I know. Um, are those just the three schools that she applied to, or what was? You know, what, what would be the process? Of that? Yeah, on the sample provided, I believe that was the case. Uh, those are the three that a uh, person attended. At the time of the award, um, students uh, should be in receipt of acceptance letters, and we would just ask for proof of the letter where they were actually accepted and planned to attend. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or feedback about this process? Just a comment. I just am um, in notice in the application process, I appreciate the fact that we're also including trade schools for vocational training mm -hmm. because there is a deficit of really good vocational type positions in, in the workforce that I know that we can certainly benefit from and I know the port could benefit from as well so I think mm -hmm. that uh, uh, it's nice to see that we're kind of diversifying the, the, uh, the scholarships to include that as well okay. That's all. thank you And again, I, I do just want to really thank Brian. I know Adam Adam's here. I don't know if Brian's here, but I just want to thank you all for your work uh, as the staff members on this and really having a, it's a tight turnaround to launch a scholarship program, review that, get the applications, review the applications and award them and then have the event in July. That's that's a fast turnaround. I, somebody who came from <laughs> academia, uh, that is, that's fast. Um, and so that's impressive. I, I appreciate your words uh, and yeah, Adam and, and Brian did a, a fantastic job, and I think we all also appreciate your comment about um, getting the word out earlier. Um, mm -hmm. I think with the program now in place, it'll make it that much easier for us to promote the program earlier uh, and likely get a wider array of applicants next uh, next go round. Absolutely, and you know, and in that outreach package, 
Uh, needless to say, uh, we have lots of marketing experts in the room uh, that do very good jobs marketing the city and the port, but I think it's an also a great opportunity to showcase, hey, when you go get that college degree or that uh, career tech degree, come back, stay here, stay in, por in Port Wainimi, stay work or come and please work for the Port of Wainimi. Um, I think this is another great opportunity for us to reach those youth and just remind them that there's opportunities here as well. So with that, is there any other items, any other questions for staff? If not, we'll... Before we move on, I just wanted to um, say again, I, I appreciate your, your comments. Um, if a majority of the commission um, wished to uh, move that forward to council, we would just require a motion for that. Um, otherwise, we can move on to the next yeah. item, whatever your pleasure. Is the commission comfortable with those recommendations? Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, there was uh, a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Hearing none, the motion carried, and now just the motion was just the bullet points of feedback. Thank you. We're now gonna move to the Community Benefit Fund allocation process. Will staff please present the report? Okay, uh, so the uh, last item on today's agenda um, is intended to provide um, uh, commission uh, the opportunity to review the process by which the city goes about uh, reviewing and making recommendations for community benefit fund allocations. In order to do that, I wanted to provide a, a quick background about the fund's establishment, the criteria for project selection, and a summary of the project and review process. So the Community Benefit Fund was created as one element of a 2015 settlement agreement between the city and the port. Um, as reviewed briefly in the staff report, each year um, the port uh, deposits $100,000 into the Community Benefit Fund when its gross operating revenues exceed $13 million. Uh, both the amount of the allocation in the Community Benefit Fund and the threshold mm -hmm. of gross revenues are subject to escalation annually by the Consumer Price Index. The first two years that the fund was created, um, uh, fiscal year 14-15 and 15-16, uh, the city had uh, autonomy to review and select projects at its sole discretion. After that, beginning with uh, fiscal year 16-17, uh, projects were to be mutually agreed upon by both the city and the port. Uh, to facilitate reaching that mutual agreement, uh, the settlement agreement calls for the establishment of a joint city port committee. It consists of two representatives from each of the legislative bodies along with the city manager and the executive director of the Oxnard Harbor District. Uh, the committee collaborates regarding project ideas um, and seeks to find collaboration uh, which would then be presented to and subject to the approval of both of the legislative bodies. We do have a provision in the agreement in the event for three successive years, uh, if both parties are unable to reach agreement, um, funds available would be divided 50% to each party and uh, each body would have the ability to uh, select uh, projects without uh, mutual agreement. Uh, the agreement does call for the establishment of four separate categories uh, that projects are to fall into. They are included in the uh, staff report as well as the attachment. They are shoreline protection, community development, opportunistic <laughs> endeavors, and the final um, kind of catch-all project, the other projects as agreed to by both parties. So the city's process um, begins with uh, currently the council's review and establishment of a preliminary list of project ideas. That list is then presented to this body, the Citizen Advisory Commission for review and input uh, those ideas uh, are then provided to representatives of the Joint uh, City Port Committee. The Joint City Port Committee meets. Sometimes multiple meetings are required. Uh, and at some point, hopefully a revised list that is um, agreeable to that group uh, is returned to both the uh, Board of Harbor Commissioners and to the City Council. The last uh, CAC meeting, the commission expressed an interest in reviewing the process, uh, considering potential amendments to the process. So pursuant to that, staff developed a proposed revised process for your review, comment, um, 
and that process very briefly would begin with a city's call for projects. Uh, we're proposing that that would start um, with a process whereby we do outreach uh, to interested members of the community and ask for submissions uh, for uh, project uh, requests for funding allocation by March 15th. Um, from that, staff would review the submissions uh, for alignment with the terms of the Community Benefit Fund, most specifically alignment with the four categories that are established. Um, it would then uh, develop and present a report again to this body. The feedback from the Citizen Advisory Commission would then be presented um, to the council. Uh, the council would review, consider, provide their own input, and provide direction to the representatives of the Joint City Port Committee. The rest of the process would be similar to the existing. That group would get together uh, with the representatives from the port. Those bodies would discuss, ultimately, uh, with the uh, expectation of reaching a consensus, the revised list would be returned to both the legislative bodies for final action. So as noted, the purpose of this is to explain the existing process, um, uh, introduce a potential new revised process, and allow for uh, this body to uh, weigh in and provide comment. Before turning it over to the Citizen Advisory uh, Commission, I wanted to let you know that our colleagues at the port um, have prepared a, a presentation and have asked for a few minutes uh, to provide um, a history uh, from the port's perspective and provide a presentation. So I wanted to allow them the opportunity to do that before um, questions and discussion. Okay, thank you very much. We will, if it's a, a amendable, or amendable, that's not what I was about to say. Agreeable, yes, there you go, let's go with that one. Um, to the commission, we'll now go ahead and hear from the, uh, from the port of Wainimi. Uh, and thank you for your willingness to present and provide additional context to the commission before we consider this item. So we'll hear that presentation, we'll then go to public comment, and then we will return uh, to the CAC commissioners for discussion. Thank you so much, and again, thank you to the, uh, I know we have two port commissioners here and other wonderful staff, so I look forward to hearing about the Harbor District and from the port, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, distinguished members of the Citizens Advisory Committee. It's a privilege to be here this afternoon, and we're here just for pure factual purposes to give some background on the CBF and how it came to be, and I think Charles did a wonderful job um, outlining it, so we may just add a little color to it. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Kristen Dikas, and I'm the CEO and Port Director for the Port, and with me is um, Ruben Duran, who is our legal counsel, and had a lot to do with the crafting of the CBF should there be any technical or legal questions regarding the CBF fund, and he has a couple slides he'll share. Um, we went on a trip with CBF money to Washington with the city leadership and commission leadership, and this was our slogan throughout that visit, there is no commerce without community and there is no community with commer um, without commerce, and that's kind of the spirit of this whole community benefit is bringing um, mutual benefit to the port to commerce the city. Um, so with that, just a little background, there are several agreements that the city and the port have dating back to 1983. And these agreements, the first three, we call revenue sharing agreements. So based on the volume of cargo and money coming into the port, gross operating revenues, a certain dividend is paid to the city. And that formula is baked into those first three agreements. And that funding goes into the general fund. And you can see since the history of the three revenue sharing agreements, three, $39 million has gone into the general fund. This year, we're estimating about <coughs> $2.9 million going into the general fund, and in recent conversations at Port City meetings, it's our understanding that about 1.5 million of that funding will be allocated to support police services, and then the balance of 1.4 million approximately will go into road maintenance, repairs, and upgrades. So that's our understanding of, of investments with those three. Then we have the Community Benefit Fund, and um, much of this was mentioned by Charles, but there was a legal challenge in 2013 on how the port um, calculates its revenues, or its gross operating revenues, and there was some dispute that went on for a couple of years, and then we came together and said, let's, let's get out of the mud, right? Let's get out of the mud, and let's, let's figure out a win-win for the city and a win-win for the port. 
And two things happened as part of this settlement agreement to end the lawsuits happened. One was that um, if we earn more than $13 million in revenues at the port, we will put $100,000 into the community benefit fund. There was also a piece of property that was leased to the city at the end of the port that was going to come back into port's ownership when the contracts expire in 2034. And we agreed to end that lease early and pay a million dollars to the city to do that, which was very strategic at the time because the city had economic hardship and was facing a, a quite a bit of a deficit. So it kind of closed that gap for the city and then gave it important piece of property back to the port for cargo operations, which at the end of the day, the more business we do actually, the more the city will receive in these revenue sharing um, uh, dollars. So then we established the community benefit fund. And the thinking of that, just so you understand the spirit and the intent, you know, we did have two years of rather tense um, relations between the city and the port, and we really wanted to bring closure to that and bring in a spirit of collaboration and partnership where the leadership from the city would convene with the leadership um, from the port to come up with ways to make investments in the community that would be strategic, that would be of mutual benefit, and get the two parties really working together and have optimism as opposed to having, you know, fighting, frankly. You know, let's get together and do good things working together. And that was the true spirit of how the CBF came to be. And with that, we have to date done about a um, million dollars in projects through CBF funding. And I think at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Ruben just to give a little bit of the legal lens. And then I'll share where precisely we are on CBF process um, this fiscal year. Thank you, Kristen. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, uh, it's my honor to be here tonight to address you. Thank you for taking the time. Mr. Deputy City Manager, thank you for the, the very clear um, and accurate description of what the agreement provides for. Um, I won't, I won't uh, duplicate m any of that, I hope. Um, there, there's just one or two items I do want to uh, point out that are specific to the port's responsibilities under the settlement agreement uh, with respect to the CBF. The first is that the port actually creates the, the fund as a separate internal fund. That money is segregated for the purposes that we've all been discussing here. Mr. Yang, who is the, the CFO for the port, ensures that that, that uh, provision is being complied with. That is an interest-bearing account so that, as the deputy city manager described earlier, if there some time goes by where the, the parties can't agree on where that money should be spent and it accrues for three years, then each party gets to spend it. You get the benefit of having earned the interest, and so does the port. Um, I think I'm glad to say that, that we have not reached that decision, that point yet. In other words, uh, the structure that has been put in place is working, and that money has been spent uh, uh, to the full amount uh, in the successive years, so that's good. Um, the port retains control over those funds until the projects are identified and, the, and spent. And then there is a provision that uh, requires that the city pre-fund projects and then seek reimbursement from the port. That is a sort of an accounting internal uh, formality that uh, should be uh, complied with according to the terms of the agreement. Uh, and then finally, we've talked about the threshold, which we're all glad to say uh, has been exceeded in every successive year since this started. This goes this way. Okay, again, here I'm not going to replete what the Deputy City Manager and Kristen have so ably described. Um, there, is, there are two special uh, instances. Again, I do not believe that either of these provisions have been triggered, but in the event that the parties, that is the city and the port, want to uh, fund a project that's going to exceed one fiscal year, there's a special pr uh, provision where you can do a multiple year project um, it requires that the parties enter into an additional agreement as an addendum to the settlement agreement, identifying the project and basically saying, look, we promise to, uh, to, to play nice and make sure this project gets funded uh, beyond the original year in which those funds are provided into the fund. Finally, uh, and this was already been alluded to, the no project alternative, what the deputy CM described is if, if there are no agreements over three years, then we split the money evenly, choosing projects. Uh, that the city wants and that the port wants. You've already talked about the eligible projects. Uh, Kristen and I are here to answer questions if uh, you have any specific questions about the, uh, 
the eligible projects, and then Kristen's got some more as to how the money has been put to use over the years. So as Charles alluded to, the first two years were the full discretion of the city. So that $200,000 um, was invested by the city in a variety of projects. And if you go onto our website at www.portofonimi.org, mm -hmm. we actually have a list of every single investment from the community benefit fund. So you can see the allocations, but you can see we have reconciled all the funding to date uh, through fiscal year 2023. So now we have a proposed allocation for this fiscal year in the neighborhood of 133 to $43,000. I think it's upped a little bit because there was a small about a, a bit of carrier, excuse me, carry over. But what we do is we also augment that $100,000 by an adjustment on CPI. So you'll see that since 2015, we factor in inflation. This is the core four, if you will, of investment categories per the agreement. And you can see how dollars have been allocated inside of those eligible projects. Um, again, all the projects are listed in line, but that gives you a sense that a lot has gone into community development there. And this, in terms of process and where we are now, we start talking with the city specific about the next um, uh, the port and the city start talking about the next investment by CBS. We are around March. We start having port city meetings where we start discussing these projects. Um, come July, we'd like to have a nice list of projects that we would like to bring back to our boards um, for uh, consideration based on the meetings that have been happening at the port city level with the three uh, representatives sorry, from the city and from the port. And so that's sort of where we are now. We do have a list of projects um, that have been vetted um, through the port city meeting and then have gone back to our four board, uh, full boards for um, direction, but there is a balance of $33,000, so we're gonna wanna bring that allocation back to our board so we spend the full allocation of the $147,000. Um, this is the list of projects that's been vetted so far through the port city committee meeting. Um, that we've had and then gone back to the board for consideration and then there's the piece that still needs to be allocated for um, the, uh, the fiscal year um, for this fiscal year and so it's sort of interesting too is that based on that time window if I go back one slide here if I can I'm not sure if I can do that process we have oops. Oopsie. Ah, won't let me do it Slide 10. Um, we have 180 days from July 1st to come to closure on that fiscal year's allocation. So we're now in July, so we have approximately till December 31st to close the books on this. And if we don't close the books, then that money would carry over into next fiscal year. So thank you for your time and um, the opportunity to be before you this evening just to give some of the background on the CBF, how it came to be, and some of the legal um, uh, aspects of it thank you I want to thank you both for uh, being available and, and providing this context uh, very helpful any questions from the commissioners about the report okay. just one question mm -hmm. um, so it looks like and and I'm just kind of like reviewing this now for the mm -hmm. first time but mm -hmm. Shoreline protection, community development, opportunistic endeavors, and then other projects. Um, have we defined what percentage of projects went into shoreline, shoreline protection, what percentage went into community development, what percentage, not just dollars, but percentage of the overall funds over time, so that we can see where the balance of the funds are going? Because it sat, looks like, just from my quick look at this, it looks like a lot of it's just events and PR and it feels a lot like a PR fund rather than a community benefit fund. That's just my... Looking at the community development, a lot has come to public safety, police, fire, parks, museum, the beaches. Um, but I think it, based on that, this all these projects, do you uh, add up to that number there, correct, Austin? Sure. So that you could easily do the math um, if it's the to to get those percentages, yeah. Um, yes. Thank you. <laughs>
And if you don't mind introducing Thank yourself. Thank you. My name is Austin Yang. I'm Chief Financial Officer at the Port of Wainimi. And as you can see in the screen, almost 80% of CBF funding has been going into community development section. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions about the report from the harbor? The port, the report from the port? <laughs> Just so community development is mostly like sport special events, and I mean it's it's, it's clearly uh, um, more in that along those lines. That's uh, that's what I'm saying. It's, it just feels like a lot of it is. I think if you look at the project list online, you'll see very specifically okay. which investments. Some has been in homelessness. I know we got things, um, some beds for the homelessness. There's a, a number of things in there. And that, I, I just think that yeah. some of what we're sort of the commission and some of the citizens that have been vocal about the community benefit fund, they're looking for more measurable, reportable outcomes of, so how many people did we teach to swim? Mm -hmm. How many people did we uh, teach to fish? How many, what is the, at the end of the year, do we have an annual report that says, this is the impact that we gave mm -hmm. back to our community that really had a meaningful impact to our, to our citizens? And I think that that's where that hasn't really, and, and maybe that's the next step um, for the Community Benefit Fund, because that's, that's impactful. And it's very meaningful to our community when we can measure those successes. So uh, before we go too much into it, um, commissioners, uh, th this is more for specific questions of the port, and then we'll have an opportunity to talk about the process overall, but I don't know if the port wanted to respond to M that Mr. Question. Chair, if I may, just, just um, to, to reiterate maybe in a different way, the, the, as Kristen mentioned, there's a page on, on the port's website that has the specific projects. And so, as, as an example, I'm looking at uh, parks, museums, and beaches, almost $200,000. I believe that on the webpage that Kristen has, uh, has re referred to, the specific projects, which I, I believe respond to Commissioner Burke's question, and it, it could be a different flavor of the answer, but certainly the substance of the answer is there, and I would respectfully refer you to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I, I want to thank the port again for preparing this information. I think this, uh, to some degree, would be, would be helpful to provide every time this item comes before the CAC, because there will be new commissioners, um, some, some version of this information, because it's very rich in providing how we got here, right? some of the softer goals of working together, collaboration. Um, as well as some of the really real impact that this fund has had. Um, I'll have other suggestions around the process when we get there, but I, I did want to mention that um, some of these graphics, the report that the, the, the Harbor District has provided, I would really like to see on the city's website, anywhere where we mention about this. Uh, it's probably already linked there, but if it's not, it's very helpful information to have, um, and it's just really well like everything they do, uh, you know, graphically engaging and designed and, and, and consumable that way. So um, that would be my su suggestion there. And who knows, maybe even a little sign when things are paid for with the community benefit fund or a post is done, ensuring that the public understands that that's how that was funded, right? That was through a joint partnership. Because uh, I think that's not always what we see is like, oh, these things just happen. No, it came through a joint collaborative process and joint investment in our community. Uh, would be some of my initial feedback. But again, thank you uh, to the port uh, for providing this information. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. So at this time, we're now going to go to public comments on this item. Are there any public comments? Um, I have one in-person comment and one written comment. I will take the in-person comment first from Mr. Stephen Gama. Mr. Gama, go ahead. Thank you, I wanna make it clear that um, speaking as a resident, and as a resident, um, I uh, have lived here in the city of Port Wainimi for nearly 30 years. And um, as a resident, I can uh, hear the goings on at the port from my backyard. And um, I'm one of the persons that live in very close proximity to the port of Wainimi, in the city of Port Wainimi. <clears throat> when uh, I, I first started paying attention to, to city stuff when, when this was percolating, and uh, when the settlement agreement was announced and reached, as a resident, I was, this is great. This is gonna benefit the residents of the city of Port Wainimi. And while probably most of, if not the majority of these funds do 
benefit the residents of the city of Port Wainimi. And the settlement agreement which created this fund um, was between the city of Port Wainimi and the Oxnard Harbor Commission. And so sometimes um, these funds spill over into Oxnard, which is the broader community. Um, but as a resident, um, at the time when this was um, announced or made public, it seemed that it was being championed as to benefit the city of Port Wainimi. The community benefit is for the city of Port Wainimi. And so I think perhaps maybe the translation or the reality has altered a bit. Um, I know, I don't know what the intention was originally. Was it to keep the funds within the city of Port Wainimi? And I know that it's complicated because, for example, uh, we don't have a high school in the city of Port Wainimi, so residents go to Wainimi High School, which is in the city of Oxnard. So there's a couple things that would make it difficult, but again, as a resident, my um, understanding was this was going to benefit the residents of the city of Port Wainimi, period. I may be mistaken, but that's it. Thank you, Mr. Gama. And the written public comment. Uh, dear commissioners and staff, thank you for your timely review of the community benefit fund process. I would like to recommend some additions, all having to do with adding deadlines, even with the assumption that delays will happen due to council or commissioner availability. Staff has developed some steps in the process, starting with step one. The city will issue an announcement regarding the CBF and advertise applications with the deadline of March 15th. Under step two, the city staff will review funding requests for alignment with CBF categories and present a report at a public meeting of the CAC for recommendations. I am asking that a timeline or deadline be included here. How long after the March 15th application deadline will this review take place? Step three, project submissions and CAC recommendations will be presented at a city council meeting. Again, looking for a date or timeline here. Step four, how much time will city representation be given to report input to the city port joint committee meeting? Step five, same as above. What is the expected date for the final recommendation by the city port representatives? Thanks for your consideration, Joan Tharp. And that concludes public comment. Thank you, are there any other members of the public wishing to speak on this item? Yes. Uh, Tom King, Port Wainimi, uh, committee members, staff, and the port and port commissioners. Uh, first, I really want to say thank you in regards to the pivot that was made, and I want to make it uh, clear uh, regarding the location of the memorial, the Bard Memorial. Um, so, thank you. Um, my question, it's always helpful to have an attorney, right? Um, a lifetime ago, I was in the music business, and I found that it was very important to have uh, the opportunity to audit funds. I don't know if we have the authority to audit. I don't know if that's in the language of the community benefit fund. Um, and, and then, Really, more recently, as it relates, unfortunately, to the uh, memorial, is that I don't know, uh, I know that the, I believe that the port and the city voted to uh, move forward with a, like, four or five um, monument project. And I am wondering if there is an opportunity to Re readdress and determine whether that is a current, uh, something currently that the community would appreciate. I remember uh, Commissioner Ramirez uh, very specifically and uh, graciously talking about the programs in, in the city of Port Wainimi, senior programs, youth programs, also talked about um, the scholarships. So. Uh, just want to get an idea if 
something that's been decided, uh, in my opinion, costs so much money in about 200 people's opinions, um, why are we doing memorials uh, at the beach? Um, it just occurs to me that perhaps that money could go to a better uh, cause. I yield my time. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to address the commission? Yes, go ahead and just be sure to fill out a comment card. Sure. My name's Mary Ann Rooney, Commissioner at the Port of Wainimi. Um, Chair Auclair and Commissioners, thank you for having us tonight. Um, you know, I was here, I don't know, a few months ago, and um, my comments aren't, aren't going to vary much from that. I just want to give a little uh, context, context as to why this agreement happened and, and how the CBF discussion came about. And it was really about wanting for the City Council and the Oxnard Harbor District Commissioners to work together in a collaborative fashion. And this was one way that we thought that we could work together on some projects that might be fun for, th for the community and kind of take maybe some politics out of the equation, right? Mm -hmm. To have those um, casual conversations where we could work together and do something fun together. And I do want to say I, I disagree with um, Council Member Gama in that when we talk about allocating funds through the CBF to an organization, we tell them it needs to be for Wainimi residents. And so while they may serve a larger community, it, the, the comments that go back to the organization say it needs to be focused on Wainimi residents. So we do have great consideration that we, that we consider on every decision that it's impacting the citizens and everybody here in Port Wainimi. So please know that. That's, that happens during our discussion. And you know, it's um, to address Mr. King's comments. We we've, we've been working over a number of years to try to figure out how are we best impact making an impact into our communities in general. And I think there's some semantical um, issues between community benefit fund and what that community is. And so, what was the intent of this agreement was for the city and the Oxnard Harbor District in order to come to work together. That's the community we talk about and how we make that impact. And I think we've also strayed a little bit off course in, in moving into supporting just organizations, organizations rather than the terms projects. And that was kind of the idea of that we do one or two large projects that make that impact that you talked about. And I, I think you're spot on. And I think we should put that in our report that we do every year. What's the impact? And that's where I think that if we look at larger projects that we can do together to make a deeper impact, um, I think would serve both agencies a little bit better. So thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to address the board? Please come on up and then yeah, please come up and then complete a, a card once you've finished your remarks. Yeah, I just want to say I think the original um, heart behind the agreement for our community benefit fund was very good. I think both the city council at that time and the residents felt that, it true, this was a, com a Port Wainimi community benefit fund and that all projects funding would go to things that the general public could appreciate and be a part of. Um, one of the um, ideas that have come up as far as um, expanding the process to get truly community input as to what really they would like to see is very important. I think probably maybe with the best intentions, um, the, the city council and the port came up with things that they thought were perhaps of best interest to the community. Uh, sometimes that wasn't the case. Um, I, if we do benefit organizations in the future, because these organizations also provide direct benefit to the citizens, they can live and feel and see those benefits. I think they have to be organizations where uh, we talked about accountability, 
where we can see that actual residents or actual or, um, uh, improvements of our Port Wyneme community can be seen. I like the idea of uh, Mr. O'Clair as far as like making sure that the community knows that. I know that was one of the things that I pushed so that if we build a, uh, um, a facility that kids benefit by or that we develop a program that seniors benefit by that we see that why that happened. Um, I, uh, as I say, like, I think in the spirit of it, these, um, the port does a really great job about providing um, benefits to the entire county, which they uh, actually benefit from that and the, the entire county benefits. But this small amount, which seems like a lot, but 100,000, I think should be directly concentrated towards organizations, programs, events, facilities that the community will be able to see and, and, and benefit from it every day. And um, um, larger projects that uh, I think were mentioned, those two, if like the community can directly see that we built a road safety device that everybody benefits by, that's a good thing because people see that and they feel benefit. Uh, I'll reiterate, I was not a, um, when I was on council, I was not in favor of having monuments because while monuments may be nice, I don't see the day-to-day -day citizens on this small amount being spent for that type of thing. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Any, any other members of the public wish to address the commission? Okay, hearing none, we are going to return it to the commission. Are there questions of staff at this time? And let's give everybody, a, all the commissioners, just a moment to reflect on the public comments we've heard, the uh, PowerPoint that we received, and, and remarks we received. Um, so let's just take a moment to reflect on that, take a look at what's in your packet, and then we'll return together. Chair, if I might. Yes. Commissioners, as you're <coughs> reviewing uh, and collecting your thoughts, I'll just remind you there's, there's a lot to unpack when it comes to the Community Benefit Fund, and there was a lot of good and important information. Um, the item before us is to review uh, the city's process as it mm -hmm. pertains to reviewing and selecting projects. So any questions that pertain to the agreement or the history are fine, uh, so long as they pertain to our understanding to make an informed recommendation <coughs> about the process. Mm -hmm. uh, it really wouldn't be, from a Brown Act perspective, appropriate to delve into too much of the specifics about the history or the agreement or, or other matters about specific projects. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to see this. Essentially, it's how does the city show up in that room. Is that correct? Okay. How are the commissioners doing? Do we need an additional minute to look over this and reflect? Okay, so let's come back together. What initial thoughts do we have? Um, again, the recommendation before us is to recommend to the City Council, um, make a recommendation rather, to the City Council re regarding the process to which, in which they review and select projects for the allocation from the Community Benefit Fund. What discussion is there among the commissioners? Who would like to kick us off? Kick it off. Okay, go ahead, <laughs> Vice Chair. Um, first, staff, thank you for putting together the process. I think you did a very nice job in giving it a first stab. I think that Joan Tharp's comments are, are good because of the timeline is an important piece of that. And, th and that can come later. But I think that 
I think that you captured all the points that we discussed at the last meeting, and I think that it's a good step forward um, in trying to reverse the uh, the process to get our community to to come forward with important projects for organizations mm -hmm. or important projects for our city and that can benefit the city and the port and um, to have a meaningful impact. And it's very hard for the commissioners and city council members to come and come up with ideas off the top of their head. And it, then it also can per be perceived as a pet project for someone. And we don't want that perception. We want to make sure that it's, 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 uh, it's meaningful and the citizens feel like they're a part of this process and they and the organizations that apply can come to us with with a with a funding request with measurable outcomes. That, at the end of the day, we know we're as as uh, as Commissioner Savilla had mentioned is how many kids do we teach to swim to, so that they didn't drown, right? And we live on a beach, and so many children don't know how to swim. Things like that 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 do have a very profound impact on on the lives of our children and our, and our community. So I think, that, um, I think that this is a great process. It's a good step. There doesn't mean that there might be some massaging of the process in the future, but I think it's a, a great step forward in rebooting a potential process that might be more beneficial for the, for the community benefit fund that makes it feel more like a community benefit fund rather than a community PR fund. Commissioner, then you you are supporting the the yes. staff recommendation. recommendation. Yes, so that's my not my I put forward the motion to approve the process. I'll okay. second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Now let's go into discussion. Again, this is on the staff recommendation. What comments do we have? I'll save everybody. I know I have like six pages, but I won't go to all of them. Now, um, can I pull, do you mind if we pull up the presentation from the port again? I have my TED talk here, no. Um, let's go, uh, scroll down a little bit. I think it's near the end. Let's go, oh, maybe a little bit up, sorry. Maybe is it slide six? It's the summary of all the total funds invested. It's actually slide nine. I first just want to acknowledge that these are incredible things that have been invested in. And so um, having a, an additional process now is not necessarily, and I don't want it to be perceived that we're in, in any way negating the investment that's been made in our community. Because I think this is fantastic. The port's done a fantastic job presenting and packaging it in a way that's digestible and understandable. Um, and their and, and their multi-year report that they put out. I, I will say how I entered into this thinking process um, around the review of the CBF process is to really think about all we this C, in my mind what the CAC has jurisdiction over and can give insight in is how does the city show up to the dance right? How does the city show up to the joint meeting? Because we're not, we're not over the funds. The city's not over the funds solely that are in the community benefit fund. The CAC is not over those funds, right? All we can do is help provide a recommendation to how the city shows up to the meeting with their list. And I think if we start there from that process, um, it's very possible that, okay, this is how we're, if we end up doing this process of getting grant applications and providing a list, that only that only informs how we show up to the process, right? Here's our list. We have to enter into that, that group, that meeting and trust and conversation that the port also has full authority to show up with a list as well. And then hopefully come in and, and reconcile and ultimately come up with a larger list. I just wanna be clear that that's what I'm thinking this process is and I don't want commissioners to necessarily think that oh if we go with this therefore we're going to tell the, the port oh well you can't allocate any more funds and anything else because we have a grant process and that didn't go through the grant process that would be in my mind amending the agreements and those type of things which is not something I would like to see happen nor do I think is necessarily in the prerogative of the CAC to like reopen litigation and go into a, a new settlement agreement right 
and it is what it is in the settlement agreement. This is just how do we show up. And so I I do like what the staff presented here as long as it's it and I know I'm I'm a broken record on this, just clear that when people apply for a grant, for example, we might not even know what that fixed amount is because there's not a fixed amount, right? That's just informing what the list is that comes to the port meeting from the city. If it is the desire of the city council to have a its own community benefit fund, community investment projects, then we could have uh, something like, I think a friend of mine in another city is on something called the Community Funding Review Committee, right? Having to do with it's the city assigns X thousands of dollars into a pot of money that this commission then doles out through a grant process, right? That is a separate function than what we're, what, what we're helping with here. We're kind of borrowing elements of that to see how the city can use that element, that grant making element, to generate our list and how we come to the meeting with that list. Um, but that's not to say that this is going to modify the agreement or what actually ends up happening in the, the city port meeting. Is that is that accurate? That's what this, this is only how we show up into the meeting. Yeah, that's entirely accurate. Yeah, this is just the city's process to review and recommend projects for yeah. uh, agreement with the port. So with that, um, you know, I, I, I like this process. I, I, I tend to lean against over-regulation and, and if things become so convoluted, they're not functional, right? So if we're just telling the port, you know, you better show up with a stapler and like a number five pencil unless nothing's gonna happen, like that's just not functional, right? Um, and so if this is a good framework for the city to follow in the next uh, maybe year or two and think, and then be able to reflect on, okay, has this produced the results we want? might be possible that we do a grant application and we end up only getting one grant person completing it, right, for the first couple of years. Um, so with that, that, those were some of my thoughts. I just wanted to ma really make sure that that's clear to everybody watching, those at home, that this is not modifying the actual core agreement because we can't, right, um, nor, nor should we. This is just how the city necessarily handles its own list um, and brings that into the room and ultimately, um, I love the advocacy tri trip. Um, without going too far, there were other recommendations on how we can use these funds to pull down additional funds, right, through grant writing and those other things. I think that's all very powerful insight to bring into the, the funding process. And so as long as this does not negate those ideas, um, I'm comfortable with, with this process uh, that is proposed before us by staff on how the city processes requests. Commissioners? Any other thoughts on this? Any feedback? I appreciate, I appreciate, I appreciate all the information that made things a little bit more clear, and I support it also. Okay, commissioners, is there any more discussion on this item? Okay, is there I believe there was a motion in a second, but we'll go back and do that maybe, or you have it recorded? Yes, okay. we have Vice Chair making the motion and Commissioner Bruni seconding. Seconded. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to um, recommend the, to support the staff recommendations that will then go forward to council on the process for the CBF project review um, process. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, hearing none, the motion passes and is agreed to. Are there any staff comments? Oh, we're moving to the next item, staff comments. Are there any staff comments? <coughs> okay, are there, any, oh, no, none? I was just gonna formally say no, we, there are no staff comments. Okay, we're in the home stretch here, y'all. Any commissioner comments? Okay, I just wanna thank everybody who enjoyed, hopefully, a safe 4th of July. Um, here in our city, at, um, as well as in June, celebrated Juneteenth and, and Pride, uh, along with our neighbors in Oxnard, and so thank you for that. And to another wonderful firework display over in the Oxnard Harbor um, area was just um, fantastic. Excuse me, the Channel Islands Harbor was just fantastic. So with that, any other commissioner comments? 
I just wanted to say the same. Happy Independence Day to everyone. And it was a, an, a, a lovely weekend, a little foggy, but it was, it was a nice weekend overall. Summer is here, thank goodness. And thank you, staff, for all the work you put into this. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I, too, want to thank our staff and, of course, the port staff and commissioners to, for making it here. This is all on, on top of your normal day, and you've spent another hour and a half with us. So um, thank you. This meeting is adjourned. The next regular meeting of the Citizen Advisory Commission is scheduled for Monday, October 14th, 2024, at 4 p.m. The meeting is adjourned now at 6.16 p.m. Thank you.